Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time I want to focus on the BTEC assignment unit 9 which is called Human Regulation and Reproduction. There are three learning aims to this unit and learning aim A looks at the interrelationship and nervous control of the cardiovascular and respiratory system. This video is specifically looking at voluntary and involuntary control of ventilation and the effects of exercise. There's a number of videos on the playlist on my channel that are relevant to this unit so you feel free to click the link that's just flashed up on your screen to access them all. All of the information that I'm about to give you is relevant for the merit criteria for assignment A. So as you all know, we can hold our breath voluntarily for a short while, or we can consciously breathe faster and deeper, but most of the time our breathing is controlled by automatic systems which regulate the rate at which we breathe. This ensures that the work of the respiratory system is coordinated with the cardiovascular system and with the body's metabolic demands for gas exchange. Our breathing control centres are located in two regions of the brain, the medulla oblongata and the pons, and I'll show you a close-up of this image in a second. The medulla sets the basic breathing rhythm with the help of the pons, and when we take deep breaths, there's negative feedback systems which prevent our lungs from overexpanding. There are basically stretch sensors in our lungs which send messages in the form of nerve impulses back to the medulla to inhibit the breathing control centre. Now, the medulla's breathing control centre will monitor the CO2 levels in the blood and regulate breathing activity appropriately. Its main cues about CO2 concentration come from slight changes in pH of the cerebrospinal fluid bathing the brain. You should know that when carbon dioxide reacts with water to form carbonic acid, it actually lowers the pH of the fluid. So when the medulla's control centre registers a slight drop in the pH and therefore an increase in CO2 of the cerebrospinal fluid or the blood, it increases the depth and the rate of breathing, which allows the excess CO2 to be eliminated through exhalation. The other thing you have to be aware of is the interaction of the nervous system with the ventilation system. There are a set of nerves known as the phrenic nerves, which help to pass the messages to the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles to allow them to contract, stimulating inhalation when needed. I've just put some extra information here, which is a bit of a recap from one of my previous videos that I've done on the cardiovascular system and how the heart beats. But essentially, we're just looking at the um, sensors that are in the wall of the aorta and the carotid arteries that will basically detect the change in carbon dioxide concentration and therefore pH. So when we look at what happens during exercise, the body's metabolic rate increases and the demand for oxygen also increases. This is because oxygen is used up by the body's cells in respiration and carbon dioxide is a byproduct of this process. So as oxygen levels fall, the CO2 rises. Oxygen is needed for ATP production and increasing the breathing rate will allow the delivery of more oxygen to the muscles and it enables them to make more ATP they need to keep working. An increased breathing rate will also allow the rate at which CO2, or carbon dioxide, is expelled from the body. At the same time, from our own experiences, what we know happens when we exercise is that our heart rates will increase. This allows more blood to be moved around the body faster. The faster flow allows oxygen to reach its destination and also for the carbon dioxide to be transported away from respiring tissues. It's obviously really important to get rid of the carbon dioxide because we don't want our pH of our blood to be affected too drastically because that could affect the rate at which our enzymes work. Think about the factors that affect enzyme activity and this is something you would need to mention in your assignments when you come to it. And we also don't want the um, carbon dioxide to stay in our blood because it's actually a toxic gas for our bodies. So I hope that was super useful for you. For all your assignments BTEC students, you need to be able to explain this entire process and the interrelationship between the ventilation system and the cardiovascular system, giving some examples. You also need to mention the interaction with the nervous system and use exercise as an example. Please let me know if you've got any questions. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.